do a video here, which is basically just going to be about Edmund Husserl, um, his um, use of the Cartesian word cogito, as well as ego. And um, this is important because I've been thinking about Derrida's critique of um, Edmund Husserl, which you can find in... Um, that I have it under somewhere. I can find it. Okay, here we go. In this book, Speech and Phenomena, by Jacques Derrida, um, what you find is a lot of critique of Husserl's um, intentional consciousness, uh, his pure consciousness um, of spatiality as well as um, temporality. When I say spatiality, loosely meaning not temporality of, you know, perceptions. Um, <clears throat> now I'm talking about this just because um, in my little discussion on Derrida, my, my, little, my little discussions on Derrida that I filmed earlier, I was kind of thinking about how I want to um, discuss Husserl, Husserl's, um, I guess, evidence almost of uh, us being sentient and being conscious um, which because I guess basically Derrida's um, argument against Husserl in, in uh, meaning and representation which is, which is the essay within, within uh, speech, speech and Phenomena um, essentially what that's doing is um, saying that we can't have a repeatable, repeatable ideality or a repetitive um unity as um, as consciousness and we can't have a thing in a thing itself of a certain th thing in itself is saying that this pen is um, we're talking about this pen as a uh, phenomena um, you know not as not psychologically speaking and not metaphysically speaking either we're just we're just going to study the phenomena of it and it's it as a as a intentional act, um, or a cogit or a cogitation, um, you know, which is what Husserl was said, which is which which relates to uh, Descartes. Um, so basically, what De what Derrida says is the the thing in itself eludes you. It uh, it's not never something never something something that you can grasp. And basically, he's saying in this book or in this uh, essay that. Husserl is saying that, that there is meaning in consciousness, that there is um, meaning, which is essentially, um, you know, that within this within this kind of consciousness, we we will find meaning here, meaning there. Now, Husserl does, you know, say that there is meaning in certain certain places and not in other, not others. Uh, so Husserl, Husserl himself does, in fact, commit some certain uh, certain kinds of logocentrism. Logocentrism is essentially um, coming from logos, meaning that we're talking about meaning or logos being in a, in any one spot of anything. And this is what Derrida says that all kinds of Western traditional philosophy is doing: logocentrism and, and metaphysics presence. And uh, Derrida is saying that this phenomenological consciousness is committing both logocentrism and metaphysics of presence and saying the same that there's this presence here and and not and not others <clears throat> which this little discussion in my paper that I that I'm writing about uh, Derrida and his critique of Husserl um, makes me think about well the about the Husserl's use of the cogito um, in Descartes med meditations on first philosophy uh, which is one of the Big things that you will read if you take a intro to if you take an intro to philosophy course. Um, he has um, in the first in the first in the first meditation he kind of talks about what 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 about what you can doubt. Um, and then he goes he go, you know he goes on to the second one where he, where he talks about not, not not only the wax argument but the but the, I think that I think that therefore I am argument. Um, or the cogito ergo sum, 
uh, which is essentially, he's thinking, well, he's thinking, well I'm doubting, I'm thinking, I'm thinking about all this stuff, well, I must exist then, I, I couldn't possibly be thinking, and not being, you know. <clears throat> so the word cogito is used by Husserl um, a ton in the ideas, and there's, there's other words that he uses, like uh, cogitations, um, and uh, cog cogitata and cog cog cogitatum, um, which are not something that I've really thought thought of about. I've kind of looked at it so I can so I can understand what he's really what he's really talking about. A long time when I when I first long, a long time ago when I first read his thrill. but um, <clears throat> I guess um, the cogito is an instance of the I think. Um, it's, um, it's basically, basically a thrill that makes a, makes a distinction between pure consciousness and psychological consciousness, or, or, you know, the pure consciousness is not talking about existence, not talking about empirical facts, but talking about the essence of consciousness, the essence of the stream of consciousness. He, so he has a pure ego, a pure phenomena, a pure consciousness, um, so, the cogito um, leads to a theory of pure phenomena. So we have phenomenology, which is a science of pure consciousness, and psychology, which is a science of empirical facts. Um, so, what is meant by this pure consciousness? Not as, not only the fact that we're not we're not we're not we're not, we're not talking about existence um, as Heidegger and thereafter were. Um, we're talking about essences or kinds, uh, like the the transcendental ego or the pure ego, is uh, essentially we're talking about the essence of all of all consciousness. We're not we're not we're not talking about any humans. We're not we're not we're not talking about the human sub subject, but the egg, but but the but the ego where you will find kogi, kogito. Any it's the essence or type of of any thing where you will find. The ego, or where or, or, of it's the or the essence of or it's the, it's the essence or type of thing in this world that is ego, and and, and the essence or in the essence or type of, 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 of anything in the world where you where you where you will find this property of co cogito of the of the I think. So the I think is pretty much the cogito is pretty much a outward and sometimes sometimes inward kind of consciousness which is onto something else, onto a certain intentional um, act. Um, in, in, intentionality is basically aboutness. It's, and uh, Jean-Paul Sartre says that, well, it's, he radicalized this by saying consciousness is nothing but consciousness of something. Um, so, pretty much, um, why th this is important is because we have to think about how 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 Husserl says this, um, and the cogitation. Um, this is a kind of a development of the word cogito by uh, Husserl. Um, it's basically is a act of consciousness. It is a intentional act. Um, the act of oops, the act of seeing. This pen, it's the act, the whole act, not just not, not the object, but the act of my of my being conscious of this pen. Um, you know, it's also it's also referred to as a as a intentional act. Um, the act of consciousness intended upon a certain thing, where there's a noesis and a and a noma. Um, noma being the object, the actual thing. To put it to put it very loosely, and uh, notice this being the intended meaning of what this is you know, within the within the in, within within the intentional act. A cog a, a cogitatum or or cogitata is the object of consciousness. Thus, this is the the object or uh, whatever is being whatever I'm conscious of within the within the within the cogito. Thus, the cogito is pretty much just. Outward, it's a the essence or type of all kinds of 
it's the essence of type of all kinds of instances where there is outward consciousness, also inward consciousness upon a certain thing with 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 within within the world. Um, the cogito for for Husserl is outward consciousness, um, and, I'll, and, I'll, and I'll explain why 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 it can be inward. Also, outward consciousness onto some inten uh, onto some intentional object or onto some cogitatum. Um, it's outward onto that. Um, and, and how can that how can that be inward? When I am, I can have a cogito kind of the cogito can do the same thing. Not not only not only can the co can the cogito have a outward intentional consciousness onto this pen or, or any other object outside of yourself, but also it can be inward towards myself. I can have a, the the cogito can have a consciousness of yourself of of the, of the body. Now, if you want to talk about like embodiment and like the, about, about the body within phenomenology, go talk to Merleau Ponty. Um, so, um, why is this important? This is important because the cogito is used, I think, by Husserl. That is very is it's a very good thing to use that because the cogito being from Descartes is is in essence a somewhat of a proof of there being sentience. And we're, we're not we're not we're not talking about when we say I, th I think I think therefore I am for Husserl. We're not we're not talking about my empirically factual and psychological e existence. We're talking about myself as being a part of the essence of all things co cogito. Um, so it's the the essence the Husserl's Husserl's essentialism is often difficult to understand because it doesn't it doesn't involve existence. He says that existence proceeds from essence, um, and then Heidegger and Sartre um, and, and Merleau-Ponty as well as the other the others following that puts existence but it puts existence beforehand. But Husserl started this with started the whole the whole f f phenomenological method with putting essence before it, with putting essence before it, it, before, before it, it, existence and that's the way we can have a theory of pure consciousness or pure phenomena or pure ego uh, pure as in we're not having things about psychological and empirical fact um, we're not we're not we're not talking about mental things or you know it, it's not really that it's not really that mental. We're not, we're not doing mental things, uh, and also the the bracketing, the the bracketing of the natural attitude also um, takes out um, the empirical facts about about the world as well. Um, you know, or facts about the existence of this pen. You know, that's what the epoche does. You know, and the and the reductions do. <clears throat> I have a full video about the. The, th the three reductions. If you want to, if you want to read about the reductions, talk to read um, Dovin Dovin Polstal. Um, so I think this is very important for for anyone for anyone wanting to, wanting to do for anyone wanting to do phenomenology or, or is interested in phenomenology. It's important because Husserl does it in a pure manner. He does it in a pure manner. Um, by way of not including the, the, all these things empirical about all this stuff or yourself, you know he does it. But he does it by way of that. And uh, the the cogito for for Descartes is really uh, somewhat of a proof of sentience, of sentience and my myself being that. And then and then Husserl basically essentializes that and makes that a you know proof for most for most phenomenology. And uh, that is a proof. It's proof of, it's a proof of, of all kinds of types that of things that are that are sentient inward and outward.